very powerful testimony today. Um, you know, I think what keeps coming to me uh, is a couple of things. One of them is a, a comment that one of you made, I'm sorry, I can't remember who, that talked about just knowing about the exposure can be a relief to the person. And, and realizing that there are veterans in this country that don't know right now why, why they have these symptoms. And I'm very concerned about them receiving the wrong treatment that can just perhaps aggravate it. And we also have heard uh, from other testimony that the records are poor, that it's often hard uh, for veterans to find out that information. So I just wanna go back to that part of what do we need to do for veterans in this country who have not been screened? Do we need to do a, an awareness campaign? Like, I just, I really want to make sure that there's a recommendation in this report that really guides the next steps. We mentioned that we just had a symposium and we had veterans from both Canada and the U.S. there. And I don't want to name any names, but what several people told me quietly was that as a result of this, they had extreme homicidal thoughts about killing their most intimate family members, that they were scared to sleep with their wives because of fears that they would choke their wives, of dreaming of bayoneting their babies, of massacring their whole families. And this was very discongruent to them. How could they be thinking of this? The people who were there had not committed suicide, but they talked of others who they believed had committed suicide rather than to murder their families and those who they loved. So that is just profoundly, deeply, morally troubling. So what could we do about it? Again, I'm from a different country. I can make only a few suggestions, but a public education campaign, using your media, reaching out, not being ashamed and saying, and trying to cover it up, but rather saying, okay, we didn't know enough, whatever happened, whether it was legal or not, we didn't do the right thing and now we wanna make it right. So come in and talk to us. And then again, it's also a provider education piece is make sure that the psychologist, psychiatrist, primary care, you know, I'm a psychiatrist in my office. Somebody comes into me with complaints of bad dreams from the war. My first instinct is to say, oh, it must be post-traumatic stress disorder. Maybe I've read up and I know a little bit about people who get their their vehicle blown up and they hit their head. So I'll do some screening for TBI, but what can you do to make sure? And this is medical school curriculum. Mm -hmm. This is your advanced practice nurses. This is your medics. This is your physician's assistants. Just to have them all to have the knowledge of at least asking the question, were you, did you take anti-malarial agents? And then if the answer is yes, either weekly dose or you refer them to the next level of care, you can model it depending where they are. But a mass level of education, I think would go a very long way.